ask you to help them overlook, help me, help us overlook the shortcomings of others and to love them through it just as Jesus did. Father, I ask protection. I ask forgiveness. Healing. I ask insight, direction, strength, hope, wisdom. Revelation. Go with us every step of the way today. I ask you to be boldly in preaching your word, the word of love. Grace, yes. And I thank you so much. Empowered. Thank you, Father, to preach in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Lord, fill us with your presence this morning. Just fill us with all your grace. Your holy presence. Lord, you're welcome in this place. Fill this place, Lord Jesus. You stood before creation, eternity in your hands, and you spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand. You stood
everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Man. I know, no, before right? I get started, I'm going to have to pray. Let me go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you so much for your spirit, Lord. The spirit of love, Lord. We, just, we thank you for what you're doing today, this day. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that there will be less of me and more of you. Yes, right. Pray, Lord, right now that you speak in spite of me, that there's nothing up here that would hold your message back. Lord, I just, I thank you so much for what you've done in my life and what you would do in these men's lives. Thank you, Father. We give it all to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 So, we're in a new year, guys. New year. 2020. Uh... Who can raise your hand and say you were blindsided once or twice last year? Yeah, I can raise my hand, yeah. Man, yeah. I'm Double bruised down. and battered and all that. <laughs> and uh, I just kept thinking about, you know, everything that God pulled me from and the lies of the enemy and what the enemy tried to do to me. The enemy last year hit me over the head the law over and over and over again and tried to put shame upon me, tried to put condemnation upon me, let me lose sight of who I am in Christ. And before I get off in this, who likes a long-winded preacher? Oh, we love you, man. We love you. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to try my, not to be long wind. Uh, I usually sum it up pretty good. Let me take this off. Yeah, take that out. <laughs> Let me explain something about the enemy. The toothless lion. All right? And he is a toothless lion. Because he seeks to see who he may devour. And he has no, he has no authority over you in Jesus' name. He ain't got no teeth. That's right. So, <clears throat> to start off, I'm, I'm going to go back and, and get back into Romans and, uh, and kind of recover or go over some things that we've been, we've been studying. But I'm going to start off in the beginning. And uh, not really, this is John 1.1. 1, 1. It says, in the beginning was the word... And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So everybody knows that the enemy was created long before we were, right? Everybody knows that Lucifer himself, he permeated praise. He, like, he, he had a specific design and purpose in his creation, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, and in that creation... Uh, that, that, that reason he was created, he developed pride. And he developed this, this, uh, this complex where he should be seated with God. All right? And, um, and, and this is something that, that we, we look back and we, you know, it's like, wow, that's crazy. And then we have to really try to relate to ourselves today. It's easy to do today, you know. How can this, this, this being, this this uh, this angel of light, who is created with a specific purpose, then defy his creator. And we wasn't created with such a, you know, a. Uh, I mean, be careful in how I phrase this. Our, our 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 reason is to praise and glorify God too, right? That's our sole reason is to glorify God. But but in his situation. <coughs> He knew of God as the Word. And we knew God as, as something different. Because in John, 1 John 4 a, it says, and this is New King James Version, I'm going to be going back and forth between New King James and the, the Passion Translation. And uh, I, think, I think that's it. But 1 John 4 a, it says, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So when Jesus stepped on the scene, 
and it went down, he was, the enemy was confounded by God's true identity in the cross. The love that he just didn't know. You know, he knew God is the word. He hadn't presented them ever as being able to offer up his son for him that we know. We know that as believers, I'm speaking to men of God here, warriors in the faith, ones that I know that, that you know who Jesus is, no doubt. The enemy is incapable of this type of love. Before, before Jesus, the enemy expected God to come down and lay waste to his creation a second time. We all know about the flood. You know, he had that go down. But God promised, I will not do that again. I will not destroy my creation by water again. God had another purpose. His purpose was to save the world. And so he expected God to condemn us. And he knew that the law would condemn us. Because he knew God. Because remember in the beginning, God was the Word, the Word's God. Right? <laughs> so he, you remember as Jesus tempted, the enemy, the devil, came at him with the twisted word. Like he knows the word. He can, he can combat you with that. He can condemn you with that. You'll know that you shall not commit adultery. And if you look upon a woman with lustful eyes, it's the same as adultery. As Jesus said, you know this to be the truth and the law. And he'll beat you up with this. It's his goal take away what Jesus gave to you on the cross. In actuality, you have to step away from what he gave to you on the cross because he'll never take it away. It was done and Jesus said when it is finished, it was finished. That's right. So, he didn't expect that Jesus would be our champion <laughs> And our sacrifice for all of our sin at that moment. And I want you to know something. How ticked off do you think he is? Yeah. Knowing that he messed up. Killing him. Yeah. He messed up. Mm -hmm. He didn't understand that the Spirit of God was law. Like what we see in 1 John 4 8, which says. He who does not love does not know God. God is love. All right? All over this world, the enemy condemns us, and it uses the law to do so. Now, I'm not standing up here and saying that we should go against the law. That is not what I'm saying at all. But I'm going to tell you, I was beat up and beat up and beat up last year, and I was blindsided. But you know, it's 2020. Made I can it. see clearly now. You made it. My stains are gone. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right. He washed me. He cleaned me. And and, it, and from time to time, we're going to get hit. If you're in this fight, man, you're in a fight. You're going to get hit. So, what would the enemy do after realizing he was defeated at the cross? Because you know when it went down, he realized, Got I screwed up. Got me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he would use the same old playbook. He would hold the law and its combination over us. And, <clears throat> like I said, I'm, I'm glad to stand here today and just thank Jesus for, for dying for me and, and knowing the truth and I'm a, I'm a child of the living father you know I'm a son of God you're a son of God you're a son of God I can stand here today knowing the day that that, that changed in my life was February 12, 2012 I can recall time and place and everything 
drastically changed me. But like I said, along the way, being in a fight, I get punched. I get beat up. I get hit over the head with all the things that I've done. All the things that I, you know, being a knucklehead, continue to do sometimes. But, uh, but I thank God for what he's, he's taught me into closing of 2019 and to going through this 2020. I'm going to share with you um, God's laws were written so that I would be awakened to my sinful nature. This is where that law comes into our life. Without the knowledge of God's laws, I would ignorantly, ignorantly be destined for eternal separation from him. You may have heard someone misquote 2 Corinthians 3, 6. They point to the law as bringing death. And this is a King James Version. I'm about to read 2 Corinthians 3, 6. Who has also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit? For the letter killeth, but the Spirit bringeth, giveth life. The Passion Translation, 2 Corinthians 3, 6, He alone makes us adequate ministers who are focused on an entirely new covenant. Our ministry is not based on the letter of the law, but through the power of the Spirit. The letter of the law kills, but the Spirit pours out life. Amen. And where I went wrong in 2019... And for most of my life, is I focused on how bad my sinful nature was or can be. And and sometimes all of us, me, you, we all try to discredit the power of Jesus' blood and the price that he paid for us. Because he's you think that that blood can't wash that sin away sometimes which is absolutely ignorant of what he did for the for you on that cross. That blood washed everything away. I can never pay him for what he has done for me. Jesus knew that, and that is why he died for you and me anyway. Because I can never pay him does not excuse the decision to live in sin. No, I'll read this. This is from Romans 6, 6, 1. This is the King James Version. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now I'm going to read from the, the Passion Translation, Romans 7, 16 through 17. Talk about where conflict arises. You know, you... You know that we're dead to sin. You know that we're raised in newness to life. But uh, sometimes it gets twisted. And 7 and 16 it starts. And if my behavior is not in line with my desire, my conscience still confirms the excellence of the law. And now I realize that it is no longer my true self doing it. But the unwelcome intruder of sin in my humanity. I love how the Passion Translation put that. The unwelcome intruder of sin in my humanity. Paul talks about sin as being an unwelcome intruder. Man, what should we do with an unwelcome intruder? Yeah. What would you do with an unwelcome intruder in your house. Right? 
So there's some preventative measures then. There has to be, because you just don't want one walking in your house, right? Yeah. Hey, what's up? I'm here to influence you and do whatever I want inside your house. That's not how that works. So why don't we do that with sin? Why don't we put these barriers up for sin? Why don't we say, hey, you know, I, I may be tempted to look at something on my phone I shouldn't look at, so let me just go ahead and cut this phone off or put a barrier or some means to hold me accountable or hey how about I can't watch cable TV unless my family's in the room or, how about I just can't sit idle minded by myself unless I am consciously trying to be in the presence of the Lord I mean these are things that we have to think about because I'm telling you man He's going to hit you over the head of that law some more. Because it is excellent. It is perfect. Just like what it said in Romans 16, 7, 16. My conscience still confirms the excellence of the law. We all know what the law says. So... So do we give this unwelcome intruder liberties to influence our home and lives? Do we let this sin tell us, man, I don't think you should go to church today. I think you should sit this one out. Or that, that person at the gas station, you see them hurting. They're digging through their, their purse, their wallet. They're trying to find that money to pay for that gas watch them sit there and, and look silly and feel bad for themselves when you know that you could have handled <coughs> something. You could have helped them in some way. Yeah. You know? Like I said, we should be setting barriers. There is no unwelcome intruder getting in my house. That's point blank. That's That's it. But I need to be better, better at setting barriers for sin in my life. Paul goes on in Romans 7.25 to explain how he set his barriers. This is the Passion Translation again. I give all my thanks to God for his mighty power has finally provided a way out through our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. So if left to myself, the flesh is aligned with the law of sin. But now my renewed mind is fixed on and submitted to God's righteous principles. Man, his barriers, he said, were righteous principles. There is something you have to put in place that's going to prevent you from stepping off into that, that pit. So a righteous principle would be there's a sign, there's a barrier. There might even might even have somebody that you can go to before you get to that pit that's gonna gonna help you out. It's like, hey, don't go in that pit. You know, you need to find you need to talk to somebody that, that can hold you accountable, you know. Uh this is a statement that hit me profoundly. I can directly correlate the same measure of a renewed mind to the measure of one chooses to sin. Let me say that again. I can directly correlate the same measure of a renewed mind to the measure one chooses to sin. Now, don't tell me you're renewed, man, when you're sleeping with that girl. not Jesus you know and I I don't want to get off on hitting you a law like the enemy hits me with a law but, but we got to be really careful what we say you know how we act them them safe principles them, them righteous principles 
that Paul talks about. Our, our teachings that Jesus helped instill in him through his word, his spirit, which became actions that are preventative in, in keeping him from falling into sin. You know? Go to chapter 8, and Paul starts off in chapter 8, and here's some good news here. I want everybody to, to take hold of this. Paul starts off in chapter 8, Romans declaring that the case against you and I is closed. Let's read this from the translation, the Passion translation. It's A1. So now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Christ, the anointed one. Man, have you ever had charges on you? You ever been on paper on the books and know you was about to stand before a judge? And you ever thought about getting up there knowing you was guilty and he was saying, case is closed. Got nothing. You ever, you ever heard, you ever thought about that? You ever thought about, man, you're dead to rights. And you lived in sin. You, I mean, me, I cheated on my wife at one time. I, I, I mean, not my wife now. Okay. I'm talking about way back in the day. You know what I mean? I'm new to creation now with my wife. I've been that way. But, but uh, all the things that I've done in my past, I was dead to rights. should have had that judge look at me and said death. Because that's the law. Man, that's what the penalty was. But he says in Romans 8.1, he says, so now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus the anointing one, my Savior. My Savior. Still remember the day and the hour, man. So real. I can't. I'll never be able to forget that. When his love become tangible. And my mom told me. God told me where that weapon was. The weapon I was going to use to kill myself. God had to tell my mom where it was. Man, if that don't get y'all, know what will. Amen. You know what I mean? Because you and I know that Jesus is our Savior, He is the anointed one that we put our faith in. The case is closed. We have our eternal salvation. Have our our eternal salvation is only the. Having our eternal salvation is only the start. Our salvation is not the end all be all. We have work to do, lives to see healed, chains to see broken, eyes to see opened. Romans 8 4 translation is the passion. So now every righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one living his life in us. And we are free to live, not according to our flesh, but by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit. The only reason why I haven't gone back out in sin. Trying to host the Holy Spirit, trying to keep this vessel clean at all costs, trying to clean my mind daily. You know, Holy Spirit, be here. Don't sin. Don't come back. I need the Holy Spirit here. You know, pushing that old life away, allowing Him to come into me more and more. And that's the only way I, I've, I've kept from going back. And Romans eight four. And it says, it's not every righteous requirement of law can be fulfilled through the anointing one living in us, living his life in us. 
Anybody remember what the law sums up in? What, how's the law sum up? <laughs> yes, it's all love. It's all in love. That's his spirit. We have to live overflowing with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's influence on our lives will be how we overcome our flesh. Romans 8, 6, the Passion Translation. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the Spirit finds life and peace. The mindset of God's Holy Spirit is found in His love. Romans 8.33, the Passion Translation. Who then would dare accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be His? Who's willing to do that? God Himself is the judge who has issued His final verdict over them. Not guilty. Read that in the Passion Translation. Who then would dare to accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be his? God himself is a judge who has issued his final verdict over them, not guilty. Damn. We are not guilty. Guess what? I'll tell you something else. Guess what? That sinner laying in the misery of their decisions is also not guilty. We just haven't told them the good news yet. Yeah. So how how can I now know that I am not guilty in any way, shape, fashion, or form knowing this good news Stand back and not tell somebody else that they're not guilty too. And tell them the good news. I'm challenged by this word that God's put in my heart for this year, this new year. I don't want it to be a, a day that I get out of my bed, the comfort of my home, and, and to walk past somebody throughout the day and see somebody struggle and, and not tell them the same that he's told me. Not give them the good news. There's, I remember that day that I almost died. And we see people every day, every day, that is almost dead. But if it wasn't for that good news, I wouldn't be here. We are the hands and feet, hands and feet of Christ. We are his kingdom. And you are warriors. You are men of the faith. Sons of God. You should stand boldly and proclaim that. The enemy can do nothing to you. You can proclaim anything in your life. Healing in your family. Finances are a joke, man. That's just a trick. You'll never see a child begging for bread. Man, you should be able to boldly look at somebody. Hey, wouldn't this freak somebody out, walk up to them today and say, not guilty? Not guilty. And let them look at you crazy like, what? And then walk up to them and say, because the blood of Jesus covered all of it. That's right. You know? Become real with somebody. That's uh, I don't know. I just I was thinking about that last night. I'm just going to use that one time. I'm going to walk up to someone and say, "Not guilty." <laughs> I uh, <laughs> so looking back over the this past year, seeing all the things I was beat over the head with, knowing the excellence of the law. You know, we, we grow in, I, I grew up in the Bible Belt, just right down the street mainly, and then other areas of Georgia and Alabama. I, I, I've gone to church all my life, and I've, I've heard it preached. I've heard the word preached, and most time it was just beating me over the head, you know. 
but I didn't ever have anybody tell me you're not guilty. I didn't ever have anybody say, you know, first the first thing right off the rip was it's all washed away. You know, it was it was almost like I had to go to church for a certain amount of time and I had to clean up a certain amount. Right. I had to I had to do things a certain way before I could fit in with a certain group of people, you know? And and it, it over my life it beat me up more and more to think that that's that's kind of how things are all the time you know it's I can I can find myself getting back into that rut that I have to work for something and that song that we heard before before I was able to start speaking I stand in all of you talking about what he did on that cross there's nothing that I can do other than give my life all to him. You know, I, I don't have to work for anything, but I do know I do know one thing. He wants my heart, my mind, my body, my soul. He, he wants me to fall in love with him more and more. And the only thing that's, that's caused me to want to fall in love with him more and more is that The fact that when when I realized that it was finished on that cross, it was before I ever committed my first sin or anything. He he still he loved me, you know. He knew what I was going to do. I've I've done it. He still was willing to die for me. I uh, I don't want to be as long winded as a. Uh, thought I might have been uh, I just I think I think uh, I thank God for this opportunity to be here I thank God for what he's going to do in 2020 the the things that we we can we can think it but he's just going to over overdo that we, we can't conceive what what he has planned for us if we if we think that we we have it figured out he's going to blow your mind um but don't let the enemy beat you over the head anymore. You're not guilty. Amen. Amen. Beautiful job, brother. I just want to share a few things, and then we're going to close it out. I just want to remind y'all one thing about your reading. You know, we're about to we're about to start a new class next week. Chris Ox is going to be coming in and teaching the class on authority. We've already ordered the books. It's going to be amazing. But I'd really like you guys to, to wrap up your reading if you haven't done it yet. Uh, the book, he did it all for you. Everything that Jeff was talking about, it's all in there. It talks about identity. It talks about love. It talks about who we are in Christ. <laughs> like, if you hadn't read it, read it. It's amazing. It really builds you up spiritually. You know, and we've talked about this verse several times. It's on the board. Jesus said, I'm going to build my church on the revelation of who I am, on the Word of God. And he says, when I do, the gates of hell shall not prevail. And I'm going to tell you, if you're not built up spiritually, if you haven't been spending time in the Word, if you haven't been spending time in prayer, when the enemy does come in, because he is looking, and you're not built up spiritually, he will crush you. He will crush you with condemnation, guilt, shame. He'll have you somewhere you don't want to be. He'll take you down a road that you do not want to go down. So you have to, we have to, and I'm, me too, we have to keep ourselves built up spiritually. We have to get in the Word. We have to get in prayer. So read your book. Uh, go back. If you haven't read Romans, Hebrews, and Galatians, get it in. Get it in. I, I want to suggest reading it in the Passion Translation. I picked that up like Josh mentioned it to me like halfway through the class, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. So what I did, I finished those readings, and starting out the new year, I always like to do this, Proverbs. There's 31 Proverbs. Yeah. Read a proverb for each day. Read it in the Passion Translation. It's a fresh translation. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a fresh view, and it's beautiful the way that they translate it. You'll, you'll really get a lot out of it. Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Yeah. The Bible says in all you're getting, get wisdom. Get wisdom. It's the oh, principal oh, thing. We need wisdom. 
This is going to give you wisdom for everyday life. One of the things that Jeff talked about was the Apostle Paul, everything that the Apostle Paul received, right, he received by revelation. He didn't walk with Jesus. So if you took the Gospels and you did a continuation, it would be the letters that Paul wrote, right? Romans, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Galatians, all these books. This is what Jesus is building us up on. And that's what Jeff said. Paul said, I build myself up on this word. I build myself up on this truth. And it creates boundaries in my life. Right? And we need boundaries. And I promise you, man, when you when you start digging into this word, the enemy's going to come in. But like Jeff said, he's toothless. Colossians 2.15 says he has been stripped of power. Jesus went down, preached the gospel in hell. Yeah. Took all the took all the saints that were in heaven, took them up to heaven. And now we have we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, people that's walked out this race, walked out their races, and now they're cheering us on to walk out our race and finish it strong. So I just want to encourage y'all, man, like finish finish your reading. Finish your reading before we step into this next class, because when we step into this next class, guess what? There's going to be more reading. And if you haven't received everything from this past season you know you're going to be missing out on something i want you guys to have everything and it's really it's not a lot that book is short and those books of the bible are short too they're not bad romans is the, is, is the longest one so that's really the main thing i want to encourage you guys with uh, my pastor said something yesterday i thought was really cool you know talking about 2020 and everybody's talking about vision and we get that and we talked about the vision for for able ministries last week the little thing he said was 20 minutes in prayer and 20 minutes in the Word every day. Just a challenge. 2020. And I think that's awesome. It's not a lot. You know, it's not, you know, a little because they say the average person only spends maybe not even five minutes in prayer every day. Less than that, the average Christian. You know, so I just want to encourage y'all. That'd be like a little thing you could do going into the new year. We could do is spending more time in prayer and spending time in the Word. And 20 and 20, I think, is not too much. I think it's definitely doable. You know, just set that time aside for the Lord. You know, and your your labor in the Lord will never be in vain. I promise you. Preparation time is never wasted time. You know, and God's got something big for us this year. Like Jeff said, if we can think it or imagine it, it's too small. Right? Because he says, I'm going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or imagine. Right. And when I was praying about the new year, that just dropped down <coughs> in my heart. Dropped down in my heart. And, and we're always talking about this. Our best is yet to come. Mm-hmm. Like, we hadn't seen nothing yet. Right. God's brought all of us a long way. He's done some amazing things, not just this year, but the years leading up to this year. But guess what? We hadn't seen nothing yet. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. If, he, if he did not even spare his own son for your sake, surely he'll give you all things through him. Amen. Right. It's, Amen. It's the most common sense thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But the main thing is we got to set those boundaries. Amen. Set the boundaries. Get your time in. Get your get your re, your reading time in. Your prayer time in. And, uh, you know, when you do that, when the enemy comes in, right, right, the Bible says like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. But you got to have that word inside of you. So let's get ready to pray out. I just wanted to encourage you guys with that. We're going to try to get as far as we can in the identity course. We've only got a few more pages left. We'll see what we can do. We're not going to rush it. But, um, you know, we're going to wrap up Romans Romans 8, and we're going to start talking about being born again in John chapter 3. We're going to see what it means to be born again. We're even going to learn how to lead people into being born again. You know, we might do some practical examples, kind of like what we saw Ty White doing. We might do some examples in here and work together and just kind of work through that because that's important because we'll have those encounters every day where there'll be an opportunity to lead somebody to the Lord and we want to know what to do and know what to say. Amen? Amen. Does anybody got any uh, testimonies or prayer requests? Yeah, everybody knows we got we got Kenny Schumann, right? Yeah, we got a young lady too named Debbie Wise. We went down there. It was crazy like she was giving him a hug goodbye. She's like, "Man, I can't believe you're going. I, I wish I could get help too." And he and he was like, "Well, come with me." And right. they looked at me, and I was like, "Get your bag." It was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 it was pretty cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, I have a feeling that we're going to be headed back down there sometime. You know, as these guys progress and send letters and give their testimony, I mean, it's like a honey pot. Of, I mean, just people need some salvation, bro. They need some Jesus down there so bad. Like, it was, yeah, it was, it was trouble. So we, we went to like a trap house, which y'all are familiar with that, but you just, I bet there was maybe 20 people yeah, in 10 were, minutes. They were jumping for like a 12 yeah. o'clock on a Thursday. Yeah, they probably done. Jump. They probably done. When I pulled up and got out of the truck, they probably flushed everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I go with this guy, and he just looks like a cop. Sweet. Everybody is really crazy going there. I look like a cop. When I was when I was on the street, they thought I was a cop. Yeah, I wasn't that thing. Yeah. I don't know what that's about. My brother is my twin brother is uh, being transferred from detox to where he's going to be today. So I just want to pray for him. Is that Blake? Blake. Blake. Okay. Yeah. So I got a, uh, it was like Nikki's mama boyfriend's son. So he's almost like a brother to us, but he's just, um, man, he's back on it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I didn't know to, I didn't know how bad it was until yesterday we were heading up from church and she looked him up on Facebook and he was looking rough. So, uh, Hank Johnson. You go, Hank. 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 Say it again. I will not. <laughs> I'll pray so, God for the guy. Yeah, yeah good do it. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys just to keep leadership here in prayer because we are, I mean, leading up to the new year, we had, we had five people go to the center. Mm -hmm. We had three people from Lee County, and then we had the Kenny guy and the girl that, yep. they, that they went and got, and then we had, you know, Chance. He got uh, his brother in recovery and then uh, or detox, and then we got one more person in detox. So, and I, and I feel like as this thing grows, as we get the transition house ready and we start getting room for more people, this thing's just going to keep growing, keep growing, and the enemy can't stand that. Like, he cannot, I mean, you're, we're literally going into his house and pulling people Picking out. Picking down doors, yeah. So just, just keep, because we're not... I mean, we sit up here and we share with you guys and we encourage you guys, but we're not exempt from it, like Jeff said. That's right. Like, we're not exempt from it, but, you know, we have to stay in this Word. We have to stay prayed up. That's right. And let's, let's, you know, let's pray for one another. Let's continue to pray for one another and, and you know, just keep this thing going because, you know, the enemy has no power. You know, he has zero power over the church. So I just want to thank you all for praying for us. Anything else? Let's pray for Shock Chat. She lives a couple times. Oh, goodness. <laughs> All right, let's close up. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this thank awesome you, day. We thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you for your word today. Father, I just pray thank that we would continue word. to um, just dig word. in your word, word, that we would dig into prayer, and uh, that you would just, uh, into this new year, that you would give us a boldness like never before, that you would just um, release your fire right now to just... Um, Push us more into your presence, Father. Let there be more of a uh, of a conviction to just dig into you like never before. Dig into the things of God. Uh, just provoke us, Father, to, to be more vocal with what you place inside of us everywhere that we go. We thank you for divine opportunity and, and just, um, just uh, divine appointments where we can share your gospel, not just in word, but by demonstration and power. Father, we lift up Hank. Father, we bind anything that Satan's trying to do in his life. We pray that you would just bring that to a halt right now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Father, we just call him saved right now and sanctified. We pray that you send laborers into his path to minister the gospel to him. Father, we just thank you right now for setting him free in Jesus' name. Jesus. Father, we lift up Blake as he transitions Blake. into his new uh, recovery, uh, phase of recovery. Father, I pray that you would just put the right people in his path. Father, that he would not only listen to, but that he would respond to. Father, I thank you for a new day in his life, a new season, a new chapter where you will reign and you will prevail. Father, I just thank you for um, what you're doing in this place in Able um, Electric and Able Ministry. Father, I thank you for where you're taking us to, um, a place that's beyond our asking or thinking. Yeah, Father, we just bless you. We thank you that our best is yet to come. 
We praise you. We ask that you watch over our families, Father, while we're away, our wives, our children, that you would keep them safe keep from all yeah, hurt, harm, today. and danger. And Save Father, I just pray that you would not just stir up a fire in us, but you would stir up a fire in our in our in our wives, in our children, in our relatives. Just stir up a fire, Father, in everyone that we come in contact with. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jeffrey, are you caught up today? Are you got a good show? Chris Snow. You got a good show? Already got a show?